Quarks, Antiquarks and Strangeness When K-mesons were discovered, they were first called V-particles because the cloud chamber photographs often showed V-shaped tracks. They were called strange particles after investigations showed that V tracks decay into pi mesons only or into pi mesons and protons. The ones that decayed into pi mesons only were referred to as K mesons and the others, such as the sigma particle, were found to have different rest masses which were always greater than the proton's rest mass uh, and they decay either in sequence or directly into protons and mesons. So you can see in this diagram here the sigma particle, the K meson, and this is your V track here. And you're also getting a V track there with the K meson decaying into the pi mesons and the sigma uh, meson decaying into the pi meson and proton. All observed reactions conserve charge. To explain why certain reactions were not observed, a strangeness number S was introduced for each particle, an antiparticle. Uh, starting with plus one for the K meson. So that strangeness is always conserved in strong interactions, that's the strong force. Non-strange particles, things like proton, neutron, pi mesons, leptons, were assigned zero strangeness. The strangest numbers for other strange particles and antiparticles can then be deduced from the observed reactions. So here we have four, uh, four reactions. The first one is your pi, uh, pi minus me meson. Plus a proton gives you K plus, plus sigma minus. This reaction um, is observed. These two particles have zero strangeness. Our K plus meson has plus one. And then we can deduce that our sigma minus has minus one for strangeness. This is all strangeness numbers. Similarly, we've got pi plus with a neutron, so we've got zero, zero, this is plus one, okay, and therefore this sigma zero is minus one. For the next one, uh, zero strangeness for the pi meson and the neutron. Um, and then we have uh, the K naught. Well, we know that our sigma minus is minus one, so our K naught must be plus one because this um, interaction, this reaction is observed. Now, the last one isn't observed, okay? And Let's have a look at the strangeness. Our sigma zero is minus one. And this means that our K minus does not have a, a strangeness of plus one. So the rule is that strangeness is always conserved in a strong interaction if that interaction is to exist. Now we already know that strange particles decay and they do so via the weak interaction. The strangeness is not conserved in a weak interaction. Properties um, of hadrons, hadrons being mesons and baryons, such as charge and strangeness and rest mass, can be explained by assuming they are composed of smaller particles known as quarks and antiquarks. And this little diagram here shows how uh, electrons were fired at a nucleus, or at a particle in the nucleus, and these electrons were scattered from three 
um, scattering centres inside a proton. And this indicated that there were particles comprising the proton and neutron. The quarks that make up the proton and neutron are up, down and strange. And the antiquarks are anti-up, anti-down and anti-strange. The corresponding charges are here and the strangeness um, number is here. And also only the strange quark has a strange number. So, quark combinations. Well, mesons are made out of two quarks. A quark and an antiquark. The pi zero meson can be up anti up, down anti down, or strange anti strange. Each pair of the charged mesons is a particle and antiparticle pair. Here we go, up and anti strange, up and anti down, etc. There's two uncharged K mesons, the K zero meson, which is down and anti-strange, and the anti-K0, strange and anti-down. If we look at the charge, the charge for a down quark is minus a third, and the charge for an anti-strange is plus a third, and that's why it cancels out. And you can do this for the other particles. The baryons, things like protons and neutrons, are made up of three quarks. Our proton is up, up, down. The neutron is up, down, down. Antiproton, anti-up, anti-up, anti-down. And anti-neutron, anti-up, anti-down anti-down. And if you go back and have a look at the charge table, the table um, with the charges for each quark, you will see why the proton adds up to plus one with these three quarks and the neutron ends up as neutral. And it's also a change in quark that is responsible for our beta minus and our beta plus decay. If you remember we have a neutron which decays into W minus boson, taking the minus charge away, which leaves a proton here, and then we get our beta minus and our electron antineutrino. And for our beta plus decay, we get our W plus boson, proton goes into a neutron and we get our positron with our electron neutrino. If we have a look at this another way, our neutron, which is our up, down, down, uh, one of the down quarks turns into an up, and the others remain. So then we have two ups and a down, which is a proton, and we have our boson carrying on in a similar way. Beta minus, and electron antineutrino. For beta plus decay, one of the up quarks turns into a down. Now the others two remain. So now we have um, an up and two downs, which is a neutron. And similarly, 
we have our beta plus, uh, sorry, our W plus boson going into our positron and our electron neutrino. And there we go. So that's beta minus decay and beta plus decay um, and what's actually happening with the quarks for a neutron to turn into a proton for beta minus decay and a proton to turn into a neutron for beta plus decay.